Good morning, friends. This is Janie Seltzer, and I'm here, as usual, in the Sacred Garden. Rudy and I, Rue Bear, can you say hi? Turn around, buddy. Say hi to your friends. Oh, he's busy. He's got an itch. <laughs> it's all right. We're going up on the hill, and he will certainly lead the way. Good morning, everyone. As you're coming on, would you let me know who you are and where you are? And I hope you can hear me well. I'm going to see about turning up the volume a bit. Let me know if you can hear me well. I desire to bring you inspiration, motivation in your life of faith. Let's go up the hill and let's talk about that. Good morning. I see Anne. Hi, Anne. Nice to see you. Hi, Jocelyn. I hope all of you can hear me. And, oh, there's Sweden. Hey, Sweden, you wanna head, head up? Here she goes. You don't see much of Sweden. Okay, Rudy, here goes Rudy. Aw, oh, good girl. And here's Rubair. So we have actually three dogs and we love them all like our children. So as they make their way up the hill and I follow, I want to share with you a poem that is not mine. It is a poem that impacted my life. Amazing that they seem to know where we're going. Yes, this is exactly where we're going, to the seeing seat of the sacred garden. I want you to join me in taking a breath. Take a breath and we will sit together in the presence of God and in the presence of Rudy and Sweden and enjoy what God has done. Watch out, little Sweden. Watch out, baby, I have to get in. There we go. So, friends, I know it's kind of rugged today, getting situated. You see the garden. There we are, okay. You still with me? Hello, Marie. Yes, well, it is, uh, it is a day to celebrate our faith and to grow. It is a day to ask ourselves the question, a question I'd like to ask you and myself. What if we actually trusted the love of God. Years ago, when I was a young girl, I wandered into a walk-in closet. I was hiding from my brothers. We were playing hide and go seek. And I ended up in this walk-in closet. I figured my brothers would never find me there. Hi, everyone. Hi, Randy, good morning. Hi, Tammy, good morning. And so I'm trying to find a good hiding place and am shuffling about in the closet and somehow came upon a box of cards that my mother had bought. And I opened the box and I started reading these words. Said the robin to the sparrow, I would really like to know why these anxious human beings rush around and worry so. Said the sparrow to the robin, well, I think that it must be that they have no heavenly father such as cares for you and me. Hmm. Let me say that again. And maybe you can put your soul in um, a place where it can listen deeply to these words, or perhaps you'll join me in the walk-in closet as I, with big eyes, read these powerful words. Said the robin to the sparrow, I would really like to know why these anxious human beings rush around and worry so said the sparrow to the robin, well, I think that it must be that they have no heavenly father 
such as cares for you and me. Hmm. So I was old enough to read. So I don't know exactly what age I was, but I was definitely under the age of 10. And God delivered that poem. You may have heard it before. I'm not sure who the author of the poem is. It's probably no accident that I'm a poet because this poem deeply impacted me. Now, did I realize it at the time? Not so much. I read it. I was a, a child. I went about playing hide and go seek with my brothers. But it's no accident that I love birds and can hear them chirping even as I speak. I have beside me a birdhouse and all of the seats in the sacred garden have birdhouses. I'm going to move it in so you can see it a little bit better. They're all hand painted and I have often been encouraged by birds, by hearing them, seeing them, and um, receiving again the message of trust. Now, as I grew in my relationship with God and read the Bible, I came to understand that that poem and though the power of those words actually came from the very heart of God. I'm going to take you there in a moment as we turn to Matthew chapter six, but I want to put the words of Jesus in a context of trust. There is so much anxiety in our world and over and over, I keep hearing it from people close and people far. I hear the struggle. I hear even for people of faith, even for Christ followers, trust verse is an, is an issue because anxiety is a constant problem. Now, let me say right now, before we take a moment to pray, that sometimes the brain has gotten into such a rut of anxiety that it needs to be calmed down. Um, a doctor might be of help in that regard. I told a friend of mine that recently. There's nothing wrong with medicine. As, 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 as similar to a, um, a cast on a broken arm, um, you need to be medically treated if no matter what you do, no matter how hard you try, no matter how much you pray, you are still in a constant whirl of anxiety. That is perhaps a biological issue that should be addressed with a doctor. Now, having said that, I want to take us to the place where hope resides. I want to take us to the word of Christ and the life of Christ and the spirit of Christ who will inform us, um, calm us and help us with our anxieties. Let me begin with a word of prayer. Holy Father, I thank you for my friends who have joined me around the world. Lord, you know each one of them. They are my friends, but they are truly loved and seen by you. They need you, Abba Father. They need you, Lord Jesus. Would you open their eyes to see you, to know that the living Christ will never leave them or forsake them, to know that the Spirit of God is their comforter, their helper, their counselor, and their wisdom. Hmm. My Father in heaven, our Father in heaven, holy is your name. May your kingdom come. May your will, not mine, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day 
my sacred meal. Forgive me my sins as I forgive those who have sinned against me. And let me not yield to temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Holy Father, send your power, send your glory, send your light, send your peace, send your presence to your people so that they will know peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give. Be not anxious, neither shall you be afraid. Believe in God, believe also in me. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I pray, amen. So it's a little gloomy here in Carlsbad, California. Um, this is called June gloom. The sun will come out in a bit, hopefully, but I feel sunshiny within because of what I believe the Holy Spirit wants you to hear deeply. Why don't we do this? Turn with me into your Bibles in Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus says these powerful words. And I'm going to begin with the context. I think the context is very important. So if you turn to, I'm sorry, let me get there myself. Okay, I might need my glasses. What do you think? Um, probably so, knowing me. Okay, we'll start at verse 24 of Matthew chapter 6. And these words are not... They're, they're probably very familiar to you, but I want you to hear them again and again and again. Start verse 24, Jesus says, no one can serve two masters for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. That is why I tell you not to worry about every day life, whether you have enough food and drink or clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are today here and tomorrow thrown into the fire, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? Mm. These words from Jesus are preposterous. <laughs> they sound preposterous. As Bigner says, it sounds like the Mad Hatter. Like, really? Don't care about um, what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or what you're going to wear. God takes care of the birds and he, he takes care of the flowers and clothes them. Don't you care? Doesn't he care so much more for you? I mean, excuse me, I think that <laughs> truly, uh, well, here's, here's some things I wrote down that maybe express what, what you might be thinking a little bit. Going back to my question, what if I actually trusted God's love? It would mean that I have a core of trust that is inexplicable, irrational, and supernatural. It would mean I have a core of trust that is mighty, majestic, 
and marvelous in effects. It would mean I have a core of trust that is a game changer in attitude, ability to weather storms and appreciation of life itself. And lastly, it would mean that I have a core of trust that is foundational, fundamental to love, joy, and peace and makes life itself functional. Yes, 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 as Pastor Don and I like to say. You know, how do you get there is the question. How do you have that core of trust? You say to me, well, Janie, it sounds like you have it. Well, yes, I do. And the core of trust gets tested. And so I go deeper and deeper in that core. The core gets wider and higher and longer. It does because this childlike faith of mine that began when I was a young girl, said the robin to the sparrow, I would really like to know why these anxious human beings rush around and worry so, said the sparrow to the robin. Well, I think that it must be that they have no heavenly father such as cares for you and me. Yes, a child like trust began to grow in me at that moment and was um, informed by the powerful mad hatter irrational supernatural true words of Christ himself for a poem will only take someone so far but the living, moving, mighty Word of God takes you to the finish line if you stay in the stream of the power of God. Jesus started these incredible words by talking about two masters. And he said that we're either going to love one and hate the other or be devoted to one and despise the other. And actually, and he, he, he brought it into the realm of serving God or money. But that is what he knew needed to be spoken most powerfully because the love of money is the root of all evil, not money itself, but the love of money. So he had to go to the jugular. Having said that, it also applies to many, many things in our life that we try to control, but is really out of our control. Sometimes it's good things, caring for someone and seeing them dying or needing uh, more or um, caring about the world and the problems of the world and it overtakes the soul with anxiety. Yes, there are many, many things. You see, anxiety, I looked up the word in the Greek and it, it has the meaning, let me look at my notes, whoops, whoops just dropped my glasses can't do that right anxiety um, is a Greek word that means weighed down with many cares doesn't surprise not like a uh, that doesn't surprise anyone I'm sure that makes total sense anxiety is to be weighed down with many cares but you see Jesus said take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in spirit, and you will find rest for your soul. So if you're a Christ follower, being weighed down with cares and anxieties is not the optimal, optimal situation, right? This is not to pile guilt on anyone. 
This is to encourage you to get under the yoke of Christ. The yoke of Christ is, is where he carries the heavy part. A yoke is, think of oxen, and two oxen are under the, under the, the yoke, right? But you see, Christ is enormous, <laughs> and we're little. We're little children. And so he's carrying the hard part. In fact, if you think about a yoke, I mean, it also has to do with his teaching, but I'm, I'm just using that physical um, analogy to help you see Christ will carry it for you, my friends. He cares for every detail of our needs. I talk about this over and over again because it needs to be said over and over again. He told us to literally let one day's trouble be enough. So first, you know, I think it's pretty cool that our Lord recognizes that days, our days are full of trouble, right? He didn't pretend we aren't in La La Land, even though we laugh and say, maybe it is La La Land, but it's really not. This is, Jesus talked about reality and he knew how hard life is. He understood and he said, let one day's trouble be enough. Why is that? Well, you see, we have this very great warrior God who will fight our troubles one day at a time. We are to remain in the position of a child. Jesus said, unless you turn and become like a little child, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. I tell you this over and over again, because all of us must be reminded. We think we've got to be, put our big, big, big girl pants on, right? I got to be a big girl, but yes and no. Yes, we need to face the day with strength, but not on our own. We need to face, put on our big girl pants, our really is really becoming a child and saying, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. I will walk with you through this day. I will trust you. That is being a big girl. Trust. Trust. That is being a big boy. Sorry, man, I don't mean to be talking just to the women here. It is a male issue just as much as it is a female issue. It is the human condition. And when Jesus said, yeah, oh, it's very interesting and very ironic that a couple of years ago today, I put a quote up on Facebook from Ruth Bale Graham that said, when Jesus was talking to the disciples, he didn't ask, oh, oh, or let me start that sentence over. Jesus did not ask the children to become like the disciples. He asked the disciples to become like the children. Now, I think about that. I think about um, the words of Christ in regards to a child and know that he's not saying that we're to be childish. Children who can be exhausting and annoying and difficult, right? But what are children in the positive? Children, this occurred to me very deeply. Children touch and learn. Children hear. They taste, they smell, they see. They're teachable. Sadly, what they learn sometimes is not positive. But put that now, what well, those five senses that children use in the context of seeing Christ. They wanted to touch him. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so do I. There's a very big raven 
in the tree above my head and Rudy is trying to tell it to go away, but the bird can stay as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> oh, it's huge. And here comes its mate. Okay, the birds have arrived. We'll let Rudy bark. He can do that. That's his job. Sorry. The children wanted to touch Jesus. The children wanted to hear from Jesus. And Jesus said, let the little children come unto me, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. The children um, probably would have liked to have tasted Jesus. I'm sure he was very sweet. They probably wanted to smell him. What does he smell like, right? And they wanted to see him up close. I think I said that one already. You get my point. They're always alert. They're always learning. The key is where are we looking? What are we desiring? Are we serving money and we want to get close to it and smell it and taste it and look at it? Or we want to get close to drink. We want to, you know, we want to get close to sex, whatever, okay? It's about what do we want to get close to? If we become close, whoa, he almost fell down the hill, Rudy Bear. Come on, boy, come on down. If we want to grow to be more like Christ, to live with freedom, to live in obedience to the kingdom, then my friends, draw near like a child. I have a poem that says, my soul like a small child enters your presence. Yes. Yes, this is how we draw near, like a small child. I, um, oops, okay, so can I just show the friend, friends what you found on the hillside? He's not happy, but I have to show you. Look at Rudy just, yeah, okay, you can have it back. I know, I know. He's very worried when I took his pine cone. Rudy likes to chew pine cones. Here he goes. Okay, he's going to... Hey, Rue. Rue, you want to share that pine cone? Nope. He's got his back to me. Whoa, he's got his back to me because he's afraid I'll take it from him again. What I am going to show you is something really fun that's here in the seeing seat. Oh, let me see. Oh, if I can pick it up and not drop it. Oh, okay, so look at this, friends. Is that fun? Right? I just, I had so much fun. This is driftwood. And it used to be a dull brown color. And I decided that it should be very, very colorful. And it should be sitting here in the sweetness seat or nearby, I should say. I'm not sitting on it. It'd be a bit rough, huh? And so, uh, see if I can put it back down. Urgh, there we go. Yes, Rudy. No, you can't eat on that. Okay, we're having fun. You know, children have fun. And I have a childlike heart because Jesus keeps me young. Said the robin to the sparrow, I would really like to know why these anxious human beings rush around and worry so. Said the sparrow to the robin, well, I think that it must be that they have no heavenly father such as cares for you and me. You know, there's a reason that Jesus told us to turn and become like little children because children love images and beauty and playfulness and creativity. Hmm. The soul thinks in images. It is fed by beauty. The soul is the sum of all that makes us human. It is a majo day. The soul lilts in mystery. The soul is born from love, is transformed by love, is returned to love. Friends, your soul is hungry for God. There's no doubt in my mind 
that it is hungry. And you can have more of God if you will trust him, if you will trust his love. I have trusted his love for more than 50 years. We have been through dark valleys together and he was present. We have been up hillsides together and he was glorious. We have walked a quiet walk together and he was my sweetest divine companion. The Lord God will journey with you up the hills and into the valleys and around the curves. He will never leave you or forsake you. This is not la la land, this is reality that begins now and continues throughout eternity. Jesus knows what he hears from the Father. And the Spirit of God tells us what Jesus, the wisdom of God, knows. And we receive that by faith. And if we will, then we will begin to notice that a new core is being built in us. And that core is immovable. It is foundational. I'm going to read again the statements that I made earlier about a core of trust. And I want you to ask yourself if you want that or not. And if you do, then as I read and as you listen, begin to just say yes to Abba Father through the life and the death and the sacrifice of Christ by the power and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So the question again, what if I actually trusted God's love? I would have a core of trust that is inexplicable, irrational, and supernatural. Hmm. I would have a core of trust that is mighty, majestic, and marvelous in effect of my life. I would have a core of trust that is a game changer in attitude, in ability to weather the storms of life and in appreciation of life itself. Hmm. I would have a core of trust that is foundational, fundamental to love, joy, and peace and makes life functional. Would you like that, friends? Would you like to have that core of trust? Become as a child and say yes, yes, yes to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Say it with me now. Yes, 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 Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Said the robin to the sparrow, I would really like to know why these anxious human beings rush around and worry so. Said the sparrow to the robin, well, I think that it must be. They have no heavenly father such as cares for you and me. Father, thank you for being with us in this garden. Thank you for uniting us in your love, for showing us your beautiful face, for being our light, our lantern in the dark, for being that 
presence hmm, that guides us, that holds the heavy part of life. Oh Lord, we can't do it without you. And we certainly can only take one day at a time. So give us all a core of trust each and every day to do it your way. Trust, trust, trusting your love. I pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, friends, ah, for being with me, for sharing this fun time together in and out and all around with Rudy and Sweden and the garden and lots of fun and lots of truth. If this has been helpful to you, share it on your Facebook page and anywhere that you do social media. I desire to help you grow, to know Christ deeper and deeper. So until Sunday morning with Pastor Don, stay close to Jesus. He loves you. Until then, shalom friends. Goodbye.